how it is super, super sketchy out. Like almost 80 degrees outside right now. January 1st, skies are sketchy. There's also a uh, storm watch or a tornado watch or something like that right now. And uh, I don't like it, but you know, if you've been watching the channel for a long time, then you know that storms like this just don't do well with me, man. Like, you know, from storms like this, cause we flooded, you know, almost four years ago now, but I've never gotten over it. So I don't like days like today, but I'm gonna distract myself with all the cars. So hopefully this video won't be too long, but I have a feeling it will. I have a lot of cars and that's the only way I can stay distracted you know with days like today every single one of these cars has something wrong with it every single one i need to modify or fix or something on it and uh we're gonna do that today but yeah let's just get straight into it man all right so the first thing we're gonna do today is we're gonna work on my evo 8 i bought a speed center for the passenger side front wheel i've had an abs light on since day one so i've had this car about a, just over 11 years and uh, I've never fixed it. Drives me nuts that the light is on all the time. Um, when I scan the code, it comes up with this one as well as a few others like the pump itself and all that. And I know that some of those will clear, if I'm not mistaken, by replacing one. However, if this doesn't fix it, there's a good chance that several others are or maybe the pump itself. I don't know, but I'm going to start off with this because this is not a really expensive part. Um, I bought it off of, I think, Rock Auto. It was like 15, maybe 20 bucks or something. I can't remember what it was, but I want to fix it. Try to get that. But since that, but since I'm going to have to lift the car up anyways and remove the wheel, I'm going to go ahead and just install some spacers. I just ordered some uh, 20 millimeter spacers from MAP. Uh, they are hub centric, of course, and um, they are perfect for what I want to do because until I get some aftermarket wheels, which are coming by the way, and these will probably work with them. I want the car to look somewhat decent. Um, the factory wheels look good. I like the wheels. Uh, there's a reason, I don't know. I, I just think they look really, really nice, but they are really, really sunk in as you can probably see right there. So I'm gonna stick 20 millimeter spacers on all four corners and uh, I think it's gonna look really nice. If you don't know, if you're new to the channel, these rears are actually rolled. So this should work just fine without rubbing or anything like that. I'm going to be shocked if this actually works. That took way longer than I was expecting to. That took like almost two hours to put together. It's kind of wild, but I have one, two, three. Like five more cars still to do. So this is gonna go on to another day for sure. Let's go turn it on and see if the ABS light comes off. If it comes off, success. If not, I at least put the spacers on and we can move on to the next vehicle. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's still on. All right, since for some reason my Evo scan will not work, it is an older version, 2.6. It's been out for a very long time. It's not wanting to read my open port 2.0 that I just bought. I bought it for the Evo 10 and the Evo 8. For some reason, I can't pull up Evo scan, so I'm not gonna be able to figure out that code today. I'll, uh, hopefully at the end of this video, I got that sorted out, but I need to move on to at least one more vehicle before the day is over, and then I gotta continue on with the video. So I hate that this took me over two hours to get done, and I only got one car done, but you know, that's the way life is, man. When you have a lot of cars, a lot of stuff going wrong, it happens. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so the scooter's gonna be pretty easy, actually. I just need to swap out the spark plug. The spark plug that's actually in it right now is pretty messed up. I checked it a while back. That could be the reason why I have such a hard time getting this thing to start up. When it sits for a while, 
it takes several minutes for it to fire up but after you know if you ride it every day it'll just fire up almost instantly every single time so i'm guessing it's a spark plug i'll show you guys here in a second i've cleaned out the carburetor a long time ago and uh it looked good I, the air there's no air filter in it at the moment um, i've done all sorts of stuff and the spark plug is what i think is happening so hopefully because it's been sitting for probably two weeks now without firing up that i just freaking hit the start and it's gonna go so hopefully this will fix it let's do it Moment of truth. Hopefully I did that and it worked. On, hand brake on, brake is on, run. Dude. That's perfect. On to the next one. There is a creek running down inside of my house. It poured last night like torrential man. But my neighbor, you know, this is not my property here, but my neighbor's kind of it used to be a pipe here, so he's kind of working on uh, just kind of like an open drainage system. If you've been watching his channel long enough, and I probably already mentioned it, but you know, we flooded, so he's been doing everything he can. My concern is that that one pipe right there is just not going to be good enough. Uh, there was two before. We've had like one inch of rain come down like an hour before and got water like to like right here. So to, I don't know. I, I, we'll see how that goes, but. It's still flowing and it stopped raining like nine hours ago. Nuts. All right, so the next car we're gonna work on is the Honda. Uh, the speedometer and the odometer don't work. Um, I did a little bit of homework to figure out what is actually going on and I'm just gonna start with the obvious. I'm gonna check all the connections. I'm gonna check the connections here. In the engine bay, I'm also gonna check the ground to make sure it's still there. And then I'm gonna pull the gauge cluster out and check the connection in the back and both of those are still okay, then I'm just gonna pull the whole gauge cluster out and remove the speedometer and see if the soldering joints are still intact um, that actually are attached to the connector itself that connect to the wiring harness or whatever. So yeah, that's kind of the plan and I hope I get that fixed. Let's go ahead and start here in the engine bay and see if we can find something. And um, it might be easy, maybe it's just a ground or whatever. I don't know, we're gonna figure it out. I'm hoping it's just disconnected because I know that this can be a nightmare, especially with a super, super old car like this, so. All right, so, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but there's a speed sensor right there, and it looks like it's connected just fine. And from what I read, it actually also grounds here to the thermostat housing, and this actually looks pretty good as well, so. It's in place, and everything's connected right, so I don't think this is where the issue is. We're gonna go ahead and pull the gauge cluster out and see what the heck's going on. I think there was incense in this car. <laughs> oh man. Damn. Oh, let me unplug the... There we go. Nice. Very nice. Okay. Okay. Go take this to the bench. All right, so after closer inspection, I think these two are the ones that are bad that are part of the connector, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just redo them all. These actually all look pretty good. I'm gonna... Ah, that one looks cracked right there as well. Like if you look really carefully, you can kind of see, and you're not gonna see this on camera, but there are a couple of them that are kind of, the solders themselves are cracked. So all I'm gonna do is just stick my soldering gun to each one of these joints and kind of make sure that they fill back in. And then uh, we'll test it out and see if it works. But that one looks cracked. These two over here look cracked. That one looks cracked as well, so.
All right, I went on ahead and put it back together kind of halfway. Um, I also polished up the plastic because it was looking a little dingy, but it looks pretty good now. I can finally see a little bit better through it, but sorry, the steering wheel is kind of in the way, but there you go. Not too bad. Um, I'm not gonna put the plastic back on because there is some crap right here that won't come out. I'm assuming it's probably incense because there was incense, as you guys know, inside the dash itself. Um, there's also a couple little burn spots right here that now I know for sure were incense. So I'm just gonna replace this whole piece. So there's no reason in putting it back in the car. I went on and put the hazard back on, but let's go ahead and take it for a spin and uh, see if it works. I hope it does because soldering stuff scares the heck out of me. I also can't drive too long because as you guys know, this thing's got a blown head gasket. So I can only do a quick spin. Holy crap, it's working. What? Oh, that's sick, it fixed it. Oh man, that's dope. Okay, try to see if I can get it to a little bit faster here. Squeaky ass. Oh, that's sick, man. Love it. All right, so that was the problem was the solders. On to the next car. Next problem, the truck. So I replaced the brakes, the front brakes recently, and um, I didn't replace the rotors or get them turned or anything like that. They looked okay, sort of. I got kind of lazy. This passenger side one was a little messed up. Um, had a couple little grooves in it. And so changed the brakes, everything was fine for a little while. And all of a sudden that horrible like grinding sound came back. I don't know why that's the case, other than the fact that maybe the the rotor that had some grooves in it kind of got worse, which is kind of strange because I've never seen that really happen in the past. But um, when I've done brakes, you know, if I had a little bit of a groove in it, you know, it would kind of, I guess, sort of correct itself. I know that sounds like a really terrible thing, but when you've got pads pushing up against the rotors, they eventually just smoothen themselves out anyways. So horrible way to think it, but I've never, it's never failed in the past and I think it has this time. So they are brand new brake pads, but the rotors, the rotor at least on this side is probably shot. So if that's the case, I have to replace it. Unfortunately, I don't have the parts with me today. So that's gonna be, I just didn't want to put that in the video because nobody gives a crap about a truck to be honest with you out there. This video was intended strictly just to fix at least one little problem in everything. If I could, if not diagnose it, you know what I mean? So if that's, if it's something easy, I'll fix it right now. If it's not, it's not gonna be in the video. Just gonna be honest with you guys. So that's pretty tough right there. Yeah, all the grooves are, um, they don't feel good. Yeah, pads still look good though. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna order a new rotor and possibly a new caliper. Um, I am worried that it's, it's not spinning as free as it should. Like that's tough. And it kind of locks right there. So, oh yeah. Right there, it tightens up. So I'm wondering if maybe the rotor itself might be warped, but so I don't wear out the brand new pads that I freaking have on here. I'm gonna go ahead and just order a rotor and see how that works before I replace the caliper actually. Yeah, I should have, I should have done it once the first time and been done with it, you know, but okay. On to the next one. You know, this is actually day three of this video <laughs> two things one the weather has been insane went from shorts to tornadoes to a freaking snowstorm in three days in a row it's crazy and two i need a shop my garage is just not big enough to do all these cars man i've been looking for a place to just put cars and have a lift and just be able to work on things and make videos i haven't had any luck yet so i'm gonna keep looking but Cows are going nuts. I'm gonna be restoring my headlights. Yeah, so I actually originally had a problem with this car, which was the ACD pump. The pump itself uh, apparently went out for, s I, I don't know why, like it, when it gets cold, the lines freeze up and then it causes that, whatever, whatever the case may be. It came on and it stayed on for a really long time, several weeks, and then I started working from home and the car sat for a while and then it got really warm like it is today. And so I drove it the other day and sure enough, the light's gone. I scanned it before and the code was there for the pump itself. And uh, the 
code is not there anymore. I don't know if it just thawed the lines after several days. I don't know, man. It's weird. I'm eventually going to replace these anyways. I want to get VLANs. In the meantime, because those are super expensive, I need to get these fixed because they look cloudy and they look terrible. Let's do it. See, it's very faded in yellow. It looks pretty terrible right there. And then, look at that, man. You can see right through that lens. Absolutely insane. All right, I'm gonna knock that one out. And we got one more car left to do, and then we're done with this video. Oh my God. I have a feeling it's gonna go on to one more day. It's the Jeep, it's not here right now. She's using it at work. I have all the tools I need to get it diagnosed and figure out what's going on, but. I've actually lost count how many days I've been working on cars. You can tell me down below which day this is. Four, five, six, but this is the last car, thank God. So the plan is I have a smoke machine and I need to figure out where the vacuum leak is somewhere in this engine. And so it's very intermittent. So obviously it's something that it's expanding and contracting somewhere around here, I'm guessing, cause it's all plastic. But the plan is to grab my hose from my shop vac and figure out a way to get it set up here and here and hope that I do it right. The problem is, is that I don't know if it'll leak through the ends here or there, or maybe if I just try to hook it up directly to here. Um, we're gonna figure all that out together and uh, fire it up and try to figure out what the heck is going on, where the problem is in this engine because I've replaced the throttle body, that was not cheap. I replaced all sorts of stuff in this car, man, and I'm still getting a very similar issue. I am not seeing, oh, yep, I am. Wait, hold on. It might be coming out of the EGR valve, hold on. Yep, I think that's where the problem is. Damn, it's the EGR valve. Right there, there it is. So it's coming out of the EGR valve. Dang, man, that thing is such a pain in the ass to fix. Guys, that is it, I'm done. I have done everything I possibly could to all the cars. Now I could probably make this video 50 times over because there's always gonna be an issue. The next video you're gonna see an issue with this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, including the uh, the Blue Evo too, but that was not as big as this thing here, but I, like, I could do this video 100 times over, seriously. Um, I'm done, I'm done with this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.